Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hey, welcome back. So, guys, uh, this is a very interesting video. It's, I think it is. Yeah. You know, th these are great topics because in my mind and from everything we've gotten, you know, this is about as blunt and as cl clear a reality as you're going to get. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. And it's, you know, the way things are right now. Again, recognize that society in general has been conditioned by the victors to have a view of the world that goes along with what the victors want to portray as the reality of the world. Can you guys follow that? Well, yeah, they want things to be favorable to them so that we willingly do what they want. Yes, give away our power, yes. so to speak. And again, you know, think about this again. Okay, the victors write the history. So all the history books, you know, that we've been given, we know they're twisted. We know there's evidence of things like mud floods at a regular interval. We know there's, you know, these cataclysms that come in at, at regular intervals again. We know that the mainline traditions that we have are given to us by the victors. You know, I mean, if more than half the world is following one particular branch of line of thought as far as religion goes then more than likely the traditional fundamentalist point of view is going to be that that they want to give us. Right, exactly. And to keeping that in mind, you know, this is how we operate due to conditioning. Yeah, and again, it's not that there's not truth in different scriptures. Uh, there is. There's, there's a core truth. But everything has been glossed over, changed. You know, it's been hiding. Yeah, you know, they hide things here and there. They make things disappear, as we've seen. They've done book burnings. There's a cyber book burning going on now. Uh, you know, the Third Reich, uh, they burned all the books. The Library of Alexandria was burned with so much ancient knowledge. Uh, Constantine and his church persecuted everybody that had any sort of uh, knowledge that could give us a clue that, you know, perhaps what they're telling us is not the actual history, not the actual truth. Here you see, this is in the DRC, this is in the Congo, uh, you see villagers discovered a treasure mountain. The soil is 90% gold. The whole mountain is gold. It's like El Dorado, the land of gold. People are digging and just taking the soil back to their homes. The gold is going to be washed and then smelted into Dori. Right, and, you know, this was... Pretty. This is very interesting, and I wonder how many more mountains there are like this out there. Oh, there's probably quite a few. <clears throat> but you, I asked you your impressions on oh. this. So what did you get from the guys? Well, it's hard for me to articulate, but I'll do my very best. At first, they told me it was like an 80% 80, 80 type gold thing. And then they showed me that this was like earth there was so much gold on earth so so much that this was the first sifted pile of dirt they took the most pure gold and then they left this pile here to be sifted again but for some reason they just didn't get to it and they're just now these people are now finding it so i hope i explain that as best i can except one thing who is they i, I, I don't know if i'm allowed to say i don't know Aki. Yeah, you you could say the A word. That okay. that it's okay. We're gonna get a little okay. Wikipedia thing okay. Okay. that pops up. Yeah, I, I think the A word's okay. So you uh, got that this was basically uh, put there by the Anunnaki to be returned to later, and somehow uh, this never got um, never processed. processed. Mm -hmm. Right, it didn't get processed. It didn't get finished for whatever reason, and now these lucky folks get to go through it. Most definitely. And, you know, there's a reason why gold and silver are valued. And again, um, silver has tremendous antibiotic, antiviral, antiparasitic properties. And Cindy and I have drank a ton of silver and we're not blue. No. We're not blue, you know, so that's kind of BS. Uh, you know, maybe there's one person in whatever number that might turn blue. Uh, but it works like a charm, yeah. you know, and we've used uh, both colloidal and nano. Gold is all about raising consciousness, connectivity in the brain. And so gold is invaluable for our consciousness in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's the real reason why these th these two things have always been kind of like the monetary standard because they have intrinsic value. You know, they are useful for things. Right. Well, you know, if you look at sunken treasures that are thousands of years old, 
um, the gold is still intact. So, I mean, it's used to also keep other things. I think in, in our body, it would help preserve our organs too. Yeah, that's a good thought as well. And again, you know, connectivity is key when it comes to chi, prana, vril, the life force, you know, flowing through us. The life force is what animates us. Um, so yeah, that there's definite value. I, I think, you know, it's not just Sitchin. Now, there's people that will say, Oh, the Anunnaki stories are all BS, you know, because uh, Z- Sitchin, you know, he was he was a nobody, and or he was the Illuminati, or he was a thirty third degree Mason, which I've looked into, never found any evidence. Uh, there's like video of somebody that's supposed to be him and doesn't even look like him, so it feels like it's just a discrediting campaign. But the big thing is, even without Sitchin it's still the same stories it's the same stories that have been translated by thousands of other people now you know it's the same story of a race of beings that come here to rape rob and pillage the natural resources of the planet utilize the beings that were here as a slave race and uh, there we go you know i mean you that's what you got so this i found fascinating and why so if we look at our uh, solar wind prediction don't you think nasa takes this serious <laughs> you know enlil enlil they're always naming things like enlil and enki and you know and apophis. yeah apophis you know uh, it, it's kind of telling yeah. don't you think it gets pretty darn obvious after a while oh man i keep going back to um Mike Myers, you know, who does number two serve? (laughs) Well, who does NASA serve? They're telling you right there. That's who they're serving. And maybe not, uh, you know, he might have retired, which is what we've gotten is that he's he's no longer in in a top position, nor is his brother Enki. Um, But when you look at the chain of command, sure, we got these guys, you know, who are have influenced every aspect of society. In, including you know religious and political but basically they are reporting to these guys and this is a pretty good representation yeah. of um, say Enki and Enlil yeah that was that was very striking when I saw that somebody did a really somebody saw them like I see them so that was good so you would say that is pretty dead on oh yeah that's really good yeah so this is what those guys look like sure humanoid um, but they are hybrid um, and then there's all these beings in between these two levels. You got these little guys, which some of them are biological, other are androids, others are a combination. You know, uh, there is a reason why DNA is harvested because it is utilized to create more beings to do jobs. And these little buggers are all over the place. I didn't really realize it when. Uh, my daughter was younger she could see these beings and they just sort of took the shape of like a floating mushroom you know but she said they were very ornery and they would do things on purpose to make people fight and um and yeah she she saw them very clearly and they were usually always around us like maybe up in a tree standing 50 feet away but they it's almost like they were always standing back watching chaos well we see them around a lot of people that we've worked with and you know we've we've worked on hundreds if not thousands of people energetically and these guys are as common as as they come uh and again there's many different types of them you know there are some organic completely organic ones that um have just kind of lost their way for the most part and there are ones that are synthetic and and ones that are a combination of both above them are these guys and you know i've had personal encounters we've been uh assigned one of these so to speak that they they keep an eye on us with and more than one because we got rid of one and then they assigned an upgraded one to watch us and harass us and so often most most of the time like when we've done lives and the sound goes out one of these guys is near oh, yeah. you know and so you know one time cindy told me exactly where he was right by the camper I couldn't see him. You know, I could see energy patterns easier when it's darker. Then then everything's kind of revealed to me. Uh, but I couldn't see him in the broad daylight with blazing sun. But I did jump into where his energy field was and started drawing energy, and it made him recoil. Yeah. And so, you know, th- we can push back against these dark things. And then there are these things. Now, the Gnostic point of view is very, very close to reality with archons. And also, you know, with 
they would view it, the ultimate power of evil as Yaldabaoth uh, or the Demiurge. Um, we feel from what we've gotten that there's two separate beings. There is a Demiurge type of energy which can be used for good or evil, but there is also the ultimate source of uh, darkness as well, which can emanate these guys. And I've also had these guys sent out um, to harass us. Okay. Yeah, these guys are kind of interesting in the fact that they're made, um, they're kind of created like an archon. You have an archon, and then they actually take a piece of themselves, and they make it its own consciousness, and they send them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, we see in our traditions and in our stories, like uh, we see the ring race, for instance, serving under Sauron. And so Tolkien was pretty inspired with that because it is very close to that. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, that was that was definitely an inspired vision. So ultimately, these guys are in charge of those gray guys. And these guys are um, who these guys report to. Yeah. So these guys, the Anunnaki that came here, like Enlil and Enki, uh, ultimately, they report to these guys who um, ultimately report to the Archons, who ultimately report to something that we could view as um, a black dragon type of entity that's actually not even fully organic. It is actually AI, and it's, it's, it's a combination, again, of that organic with the AI. Right. It is a merged situation where um, they do work together now. At one point, they were separate. I'm, I can't tell you when in history. I'm just shown that they were separate, but now they're merged. So again, you know, it's like everything is kind of, there's truth in there, but then things are twisted. It's uh, it's something that takes a lot of sorting out in so many ways, but the best way really is through uh, years of deep meditation and, you know, finding for yourself, uh, going within, making contact with the higher realms. So ultimately, yeah, at the top, there is a quote-unquote dragon. You know, there, this would be your, your great Satan, so to speak, your ultimate Satan. Uh, although the Satan on this planet, controlling this planet, is this, but it does work for ultimately this through all the things that we have seen before these are all different types of beings and you know since they are not really nice beings they're not you know benevolent beings we could call them demonic sure they're they're all kind of evil definitely they're pursuing their own thing their own agenda and you know they're not they, they don't care about the indigenous people very much like um again looking at the movies very much like avatar you know, when uh, humans come to this planet and the indigenous people are living in harmony with the planet uh, and they just start raping, robbing, and pillaging Anunnaki style. Yes, they do, and they have no problems doing it. And we've seen the symbolism of the great dragon, the serpent, you know, and it's, like Cindy was saying, it is more along the lines of a Chinese uh, dragon type of... It, yeah, it is. When I saw that, it's like, okay, these folks knew something. They did, but you know, there's not, doesn't mean again all dragons are evil. Um, there, it's there are uh, reptilian humanoid beings that are actually, you know, fairly benevolent too out there. You know. And you know what? What I understand, and I do believe this, is like dragons. We all can have our own dragon as a guide, so we don't throw the baby out with bathwater. No, no, it's just this particular one, this kind of black goo infested entity that is you know giving a lot of problems to many different planets and systems so you know when we look at as we had said the oldest copy of the gospel of john is about 300 a.d all right and actually the oldest full copy we have of the entire um hebrew torah is is actually i think it's 900 and something ce ce um as far as you know full copies when we look at the stories in the Bible and we see the flood story, then you see this, the stories from the Sumerian tablets, which we don't really know how old they are. You see here they're saying 20,000-year-old Sumerian tablets. Others say they're 4,000. They are, they are definitely at least 4,000, most of them. 
uh, which again, you know, vastly predates and gives us a lot more information than what we get from the Bible because the Bible is, again, it's cliff notes. You know, the Bible is is just, you know, you read Genesis 6, there's one little blurb, and then you could find more in the Pseudepigrapha. Um, so, you know, you really got to go deep and, and just not look at things superficial. The problem is, you know, the vast majority of, of people out there haven't even read it cover to cover, haven't even studied it, you know, and... Um, as I've said before, I've I've handwritten, hand copied, in order to memorize, and that's how I've discovered a lot of inconsistencies and congruencies and things that just made me say, hmm, they made me go deeper and deeper and deeper. And so when we look at like Michael Tellinger, who has done so much research into uh, the Anunnaki and all the legends, uh, he's done great work. As you see this footprint, which it really does feel to be very, very legitimate. You know, that's like a four, four and a half foot long footprint, right? So if, if you if you got a six foot tall guy that maybe has a 12 inch footprint, just times it by four to five times, right? So that's a pretty big individual, 25, 30 foot tall individual. But, you know, we have these stories of giants and we have them in the Bible in brief, you know. Uh, and then we have them all around the world in detail as well. So there's there's so many stories of these giant beings everywhere. And we could see, you know, from all the relics, you know, Africa is one of the areas that was mostly, I guess it is one of the richest areas, you know, and that's why they were down there going crazy, uh, doing their mining thing way before Homo sapiens sapiens were here. So it's fascinating to see that there is there are old gold mines there that, according to the timeline, were not dug by Homo sapiens sapiens. Were they dug by Homo erectus? You know, I don't think you know most scientists will say most anthropologists would say Homo erectus had the intelligence to go digging for gold. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just don't really know very much. Really, that's the reality of it all. And then we have Adam's calendar, which is also known as Enki's calendar. As you know, we know Adam, the legend of Adam and Eve, is again taken from Adama. It's it's taken from the older Sumerian stories, which are thousands and thousands of years older. And you know, again, you got to ask yourself, you know, why do all the politicians put their hand on the Bible and swear themselves in? Whether it's Obama, whether it's Bush, whether it's Clinton, all the way on down the line, you know, shouldn't these guys just poof, go up in a blaze of fire if this is the true, complete word of God? You know, the Bible was started. It really, it, it goes back to the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD when they didn't even agree on whether Christ was man or God or God man. These things were, you know, debated in councils and the early Christians, they didn't agree on it, you know. And so meanwhile, what was accepted was basically agreed upon by the Holy Roman Emperor and his bishops. So you have to really go deep and, and look in other places and look and look for congruency across the globe. What does everybody say? What do what what are they saying over in Africa? What are they saying over in India? What are they saying, you know, over in Australia with the Aboriginals? How about the Americans? You know, the the original people of the Americas, which we don't even know who the original people of the Americas really, really were. When you get down to it, you know, it's come in waves. And you know, what do all the global mythologies say? Put it all together, look at the Sumerian stories, then you start to get a picture. Because, you know, what they've given us is what they want us to believe. And there's a much bigger picture here that many have missed because of just conditioning. They can't get it out of their brain because it's been so beaten in and conditioned. And, you know, me too, as a little kid, I was sitting by my bedside, well, kneeling by my bedside every night, you know, going through our Afa others and, and Hail Marys and et cetera, et cetera, being brought up Catholic. But I've been in at least 40 different denominations of churches, and I've joined them and taken part in them. Uh, you know, everything from Jews for Jesus to Lutheran to Episcopalian, Catholic, Baptist, Evangelical, uh, Pentecostal, you name it. I've tried it. I've explored it and been inside it. 
Um, that was actually in some of the ones I went to that were more evangelical and Pentecostal laying on our hands. That's when I was really like getting intrigued by the life force when I was a teenager because I could feel the electricity and that was really clicking with me. And that got me, you know, reading into and starting to study things like pranic healing and qigong and recognizing this is the same. What I feel when I go there and they're doing, they're slaying people in the spirit. And, you know, that's okay because it's quote unquote Christian. Uh, but yet the same people would look at it. And, and if we were doing energy healing with qigong or reiki, they would view that as demonic. That's just ignorance. There, that's nothing but pure ignorance because you've only been brought up in one tradition. Uh, so when we start looking deeper, we start to recognize, wow, we have a tremendous amount of inherent potential and power within us, uh, as far as consciousness and healing as well. And again, you know, there's so much out there that shows us that our history is, is not what they've told us. And, you know, there's all these vast old megalithic sites that, scream of intelligence and advanced knowledge it, it it really does and you know with me um as far as my journey is concerned i really wanted to be a, just a, a good uh you know sunday school person I, I wanted to go to sunday school i wanted to understand the bible i wanted to know all of these things but when these other things like the sumerian tablets and things of that nature were put in front of me i was like you know really i mean this is so obvious and it was very difficult and very painful to like pull myself away and separate the two because they threaten us with you know um like a life in uh, in hell and eternal damnation if we dare think anything else so it was really difficult to tear away from that but once i did oh my gosh my life changed and then i could i was free to explore my own own abilities Exactly. And, you know, we do have a personal relationship with Yeshua as we commune with Yeshua every day, you know. So, but Yeshua doesn't have a problem with us also having a personal relationship with Kuan Yin or Buddha or, you know, any other benevolent being. That's just humans. That's just uh, inferior human thinking that doesn't understand the bigger picture because you've been conditioned. It's because you've been conditioned into a fear-based reality. And that's basically by the controllers. You could thank, uh, you know, we could thank do, 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 these guys for that. Yes. That's their teaching, which is, again, one of control. It's all about control, power, keeping people in the dark. And so when we look at Adam's calendar, it's estimated to be about 75,000 years old. That is really interesting because we jump over to the law of one and that's the beginning of this particular cycle, which comes in three pieces of 25,000 year intervals, uh, you know, which started 75,000 years ago, which coincides again to Adam's calendar, which is like the oldest of these, you know, relics that we have, which some say is actually the burial site of an Anunnaki. Mm -hmm. Right. And I believe that too. Yeah, so it's it's fascinating. It's all about rising through the densities. And now we're going into a time period where we could rise above all those guys that we looked at and, you know, be out of their reach, out of their control. So they don't want that. And as we've said, they would much rather lose whatever of the herd that's here and have that that those entities, you know, reincarnate on another third density planet somewhere else that's under their control, under their system. It doesn't really matter if you're on Earth or if you're on a different planet as long as it's one of the ones that they control. That's very, very important, yeah. Yeah, I mean, do you want to go into more detail on that at all? Not right now. Okay, but that is the key. So if they could get us to constantly fight amongst each other, if they could get us to lower our vibrations and get angry and just, you know, just want to uh, do lower vibrational acts, they're winning. They're winning. And that's why Yeshua said, you know, if somebody slaps you on one cheek, give the other. You know, you, and, and then I know I saw a comment saying, you know, what can pacifism achieve well you know it's it's again it's loving not your life even unto death 
uh, and you'll rise up and above, you know, the fray. If how many revolutions have there been in this on this planet that we know of that have led to nothing but another revolution later on? Because you know you replace one dictator with another. Yeah, like the war to end all wars. Yeah, and then there's another one of those yeah. wars to end all wars, and then another one. So, you know, the way out of this is to get out of this cycle and system because, you know, don't miss the bigger picture here. The bigger picture is consciousness. The bigger picture is rising above. It's not replacing one leader with another leader. The whole system is corrupt. The whole way of this planet is one that's ultimately going to lead to the death of the planet unless we change our ways. And that's really important to really acknowledge, acknowledge that and absorb it. Unless mom gets mad and mom washes it all away, as Tool says. She might do that. She really could. And so, you know, there's even structures that are way older than Homo sapiens sapiens out there. Yeah, as we were saying, the history books, totally rewritten. How long have these guys been around? We don't really know, you know. Um, And who were we before the fall, quote unquote? Because the fall is one of vibration. It's consciousness. It is. And I, I feel we were beautiful, more like a light being, like a not quite as dense as we are now. That's what I'm getting. Most definitely. Um, when I see Lemuria, I see fifth density. Yes, me too. Yeah. Lemuria was 5D. Um, the fall started, you know, at the edges of that time period. So if we view again in segments uh, uh, and it of course, the Hindu system has yugas, and so, you know, the satya, and of course, we've been in the Kali, and we're coming out of the Kali, and, you know, we have the Duapara, and there's also the Treta, so we go through these cycles, we could, you know, view them as different different evolutions in consciousness, there's an ascendant path and a descendant path. When we went into that descendant path, we came in contact with these nasty beings that took advantage of the situation and uh, helped it along <laughs> so to speak yeah <laughs> they sure did yeah so you know again we have to look at the bigger picture guys bigger picture that's that's really like one of the prime reasons we are here because you know the whole prison that has been created around the minds of humanity has to be destroyed. Yeah, it, we do. We need to break out of it and understand who we are. Yep. So, I mean, it makes perfect sense about these predator species that come and they go from one planet to another. We've seen all the mass die-offs. Does it seem like something an indigenous species would do? People that were actually here? No, you know, look at how the Native Americans lived and the Australian Aboriginals and and the natives in Africa. Yeah, they live in harmony. They live in harmony with nature. They were part of nature, part of the earth. They recognize that they're a cell in, in the body of Gaia, Mother Earth. And so they wouldn't do those type of things. It's just not part of it. And we see relics like you see over here. There's off-limit areas in the Grand Canyon you can't go to that people have seen giant bodies inside, pyramids and other sorts of Egyptian type of relics. You can't go in there. It's blocked off. They don't want you knowing the truth. They don't want you to. And where these deep underground military bases are, this is where you know the Anunnaki had places. This is, this is underground uh, fortresses, bastions, different places where they were and as we said we remote viewed nibiru um it's not even really a planet it's more of a ship now because it's dead you know these beings are nothing but a plague upon any land that they come on they rape pillage destroy and then move on to another and and the earth's not the only one they're they're doing this to they're doing this to countless planets yeah, and it's a cyclical thing, and now we're coming out of that cycle, and Earth is like hanging on, you know, she's she's breathing, she's trying to hang on, and as we move in into the the photon belt, the light, these darker energies are peeling off. So you know, it does seem that she is going to make it, but she needs all of our help. We need to heal ourselves first. That's so important, so that we can heal the planet. 
Yes. So, you know, I would equate Nibiru to Darth Vader. You know, how Darth Vader ends up um, becoming more machine than man. Well, that's exactly how Nibiru is. It, it's more of a machine. Uh, it's more of a ship now. And also, it's, I would say, and I haven't asked Cindy, but to me, this this is a planet that only becomes solid when you're in the lower astral. So that's why it might have some effects on us out there right now, but we are not really seeing it totally because as we move up in vibration, we're going to move through that lower astral, which is, you know, the home for so many of these nasty little things and nasty big things uh, on our way up past that. And so that's why, you know, I, I don't view Sitchin as having it completely right with his view of it, you know, being a third density planet that loops out and loops back in i think they could just take it anywhere they want it's a ship you know they could park it anywhere they could park it on the other side of the sun and maybe we get glimpses of it from time to time um simply because we're rising up in vibration to where we're going to see it full bore um as i shared with you my daughter when she was eight she had a nightmare came to me and she saw this you know she saw a huge red planet out in the sky that was enormous and it freaked her out yes i i've had that dream where i i saw it it was like in the sky it was right there for all to see and when we look at mars you know mars was once you know beautiful and loaded with life and actually you know uh, a lot of people that were living on mars are here on earth now with us as well they've they're a part of it you know they're merged in and uh you know mars was on its way to becoming a nibiru and that's exactly you know still what they have planned for earth yep it's it's it is <laughs> yeah there's evidence of mining everywhere and we've seen evidence all through nevada in areas that were not mined in modern times but then we've seen like all sorts of things that were inexplainable unless people were mining this area thousands and thousands of years ago yeah it's you know really very confusing convoluted you know but the thing is is we have to work on ourselves to help save earth exactly so guys make sure you are subscribed have the bell clicked for all the notifications thanks for your support on ko-fi and patreon because <clears throat> we couldn't do it without you anybody that needs to set up uh, a time for a session it's evolutionary energy arts at gmail.com or eearts at protonmail.com and we'll be glad to help you and thank you also for your patience with that and the charts this is a little experimental this is a, a weighted fork and i want to know i'm going to whack it i want to know if people feel it okay it's so it, this yeah this will be quiet but it'll be sending out a vibration so we'll see who's really yes, sensitive yes Okay, I hope that helped. God bless and namaste. God bless, guys. Namaste.